Hello and welcome to the JBNM Sports Fanatic channel. Thank you for joining me for this video. And the Cleveland Browns, they have brought in tight end Connor Davis. Um, he's six foot eight. There's a lot to like about him, and I'll get into the details specific in a minute. But um, they also let go tight end Kyle Markway. And so Markway essentially was on their practice squad last season um, for a good bit. And so um, they decided to part ways. And so the Browns, you know, they've got a pretty um, decent tight end room already. Um, obviously, it all starts with Austin Hooper at tight end. And then you have guys like Lassiter who they drafted, you know, Bryant Harrison. He was a prospect that was high on last year coming out. I thought it was a great value pick up there. Um, then you can't forget about David um, Joku. And so um, obviously, whether or not he gets traded, whether or not he stays, you know, what's the situation with that? That remains to be seen. Um, and then, you know, they've got other um, tight ends such as, you know, Jordan Franks, um, Stephen Carlson. And so, um, yeah, they've, they've definitely got um, a lot of tight ends already. So when you add Davis Con Connor to um, what they've already got, yeah, it seems like a pretty crowded tight end room in which you really got to compete, you know, for a roster spot, you know, and even from then, you know, making sure that um, you can get some playing time if you do make the roster. But there's a lot of competition there, but there's a lot to like about this kid particularly. And so we'll start with um, – covering some of the stuff that they talk about here in the article. Um, obviously, you know, Davis is in his first – he's a first-year player who spent most of 2020 on the New York Jets on practice squad. Um, he stands out at six foot eight, and he played in both the AA, AAF and the XFL. So um, that's unique right there in the sense of, you know, playing in both leagues. Um, so that's rather interesting there. Before um, joining the Jets, he played um, at Stony Bricks for college. And what's interesting there is that he began his career at defensive end. Um, and he also played, you know, offensive tackle before converting to tight end. So there you have it. Defensive end, offensive tackle and tight end. And to top it off is the fact that in high school, I believe he played, you know, football, basketball, and ran track. So you're telling me a guy, you know, he not only does he play multiple sports, but he also can um, do multiple positions. We're talking about defensive end. So you know how to get after the quarterback. You know how to protect the quarterback. So obviously his pass blocking skills have to be really um, up there. And then also the fact that you play basketball, that means you got some ups to you. So you can, you know, go up there and snag those passes, especially at six foot eight, you know, so – he, he's definitely a potential that uh, has the potential that you got to love um, for, from a tight end perspective. So I do like that in this sense. And so, um, yeah, and a little bit more just to dive deeper into Connor Davis's um, background. And so I'll start with some of his um, collegiate. Um, well, just a little bit of background really about him is that he's, you know, a Maryland native. Played football, basketball, and ran track, as I mentioned earlier, in high school. Um, but he opted to concentrate on football in his senior year and was an ESPN small school first team all-state selection um, as he played both sides of the ball. Davis racked up 235 receiving yards and five touchdowns, as well as 117 tackles and 12 sacks. Um, he opted to attend Stony Brook, um, and he was redshirted his freshman year back in 2012. In 2013, he made his debate, um, but he played mostly as a reserve tight end, but he also played um, on the defensive line and recorded a sack. Fast forward to 2014, he got his first career start at defensive end, but he suffered a season-ending injury in the second game of the year, so he ended up with just two tackles. And so... So far, you know, two years removed from high school, hadn't been able to make much con contributions to the team yet. Obviously, injuries derailed that second year and what could have been. Um, but then you fast forward to 2015 when he made his return. He moved to right tackle where he got to start 10 games. However, in 2016, he moved back to tight end where he caught his first career pass. He started one game on the defensive line, um, recording three tackles, including one for a loss. And then fast forward to his senior year, finally, um, he was able to concentrate on one position as he played 11 games at tight end. He caught five passes for 38 yards. And so what this tells me is that in 11 games, if you have just five passes, then you're primarily being used to block. That's really what they utilized him for. Otherwise, he'd have some more receptions than that. And so he went unselected, obviously, in the 2018 NFL Draft. Um, he actually had um, a mini camp tryout with the Giants, but he was unable to earn himself a contract, and he ended up playing two games for AAF's um, Birmingham Iron in 2019, and then one for the XFL St. Louis Battlehawks in 2020. 
So he's definitely um, familiar with, you know, having to switch not just, um, you know, locker rooms, but also, you know, different leagues as well. So um, but he eventually, you know, signed with the Jets during training camp, um, in which that lasted just a few days. And they later signed him to the practice squad in November and then um, signed him to a future deal to a future deals contract. Um, and so he was not a, elevated for any of their 2020 games and which, you know, that was a really a tough year, 2020, um, obviously with all the implications of COVID and all the restrictions. So it was extremely hard to make teams to get elevated up from any type of practice squad or anything, just simply because it was not a normal season by any means. And so, and just in terms of um, some of what the scouts are saying about, um, well, what they have to say about Connor Davis is that, and usage, um, and this is particularly when the Jets, you know, utilized him. It was no- worth noting, they said, that he also played, you know, offense line in college, which we did state earlier. Um, but they're saying even when he plays tight end, he'll often line up in a slot or in a backfield. In addition, he played some snaps as an off-the-ball linebacker when he was a D lineman. In one of his XFL appearances, Davis underlined his versatility by um, playing snaps at tight end, fullback, left tackle, right tackle, and in the slot. This man goes all around. I wouldn't be surprised if he threw some passes or something. Um, he, Although those tackle reps were in unbalanced formations with two tackles next to the other one and on the opposite side. Now, in terms of when they break down his pass catching, um, they're saying that Davis does not – he doesn't have much pass catching experience since high school. He played in a run heavy system at Stony Brooks, and that makes sense. Um, a, a run heavy, heavy offense there, and caught just um, six passes for 41 yards throughout his entire collegiate career. Since that time, he um, caught three passes for nine yards in two AAF games and wasn't targeted in his lone XFL appearance. And so, um, and so, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, maybe he might actually be able to be a decent pass catcher. Um, that's just not what the teams that he has played for primarily use them as. They seem to be, you know, run first offenses. And so um, definitely that remains to be seen just how much he'd be able to contribute to that. But obviously, you know, um, if you're you know trying to make the roster and you're that third tight end, being able to block does help. Because if they go heavy set with the um, tight end formations, they're going to want you to come in and block most likely. So, yeah, the fact that he's, you know, can do that, he has a lot of flexibility to him. I mean, a great amount of experience playing different positions and stuff. So he's someone that you can actually get really creative with. He's obviously got massive size to him. And so it'll just be really interesting, you know, what the Browns have envisioned for Connor um, moving forward. But with that being said, it all starts with an opportunity. And so first he's got to take advantage and show the coaching staff that he deserves to remain with the team. And then from there, we'll see what happens, guys, limits. But the Browns, they have a tremendous roster already. You got to be excited to see, you know, what this season holds. Obviously, we know some of the key pickups that they have, guys like D- Jadavion Clowney that they picked up, um, John Johnson the third, just to name a few people. And so, yeah, definitely this team is a team that's primed and looking to, you know, show that last year that wasn't just a fluke, that they're going to be consistent and not just consistent. They want to go further than they went last year. And so this is going to be a team that's exciting to watch. Hope they stay healthy. Obviously, Odell Beckham Jr. coming back, that's going to be huge. How they utilize him, we'll have to see how he fits um, in that offense. Is that offense seemed to took off last year once he um, was no longer in the offense. But, I mean, I, I, I think the guy still has every ounce of skill that he had with the Giants. And so it's just a matter of, you know, now that he sees this is a winning team, it can be done. Just him and Baker getting on the same page. And there you go. The Browns will be even better for it. But with that being said, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, as more news continues to drop, you can be sure to find it here. So thanks again for watching and see you guys next time.